Again, welcome to uh, the 10th lecture of Special Relativity. Today we're going to be going in-depth into flux. As a matter of fact, this is one in a series of lectures in which we're going to take a deep dive into the concept of flux. Okay, so I'm going to break it down from as simple as possible to uh, the most variable uh, surface or electric field that you can imagine. Okay, so let's begin with a good do now. So today's do now is going to serve as a kind of reminder of Gauss's law of electric field. So just for the do now, go ahead and write down Gauss's law of electric field. Let's see if you remember it, and I'll give you a few seconds, and good luck. All right, hopefully that was enough time to go ahead and write down Gauss's law of electric field. Now let me just go ahead and write it down for you. Hopefully you see what I'm writing, right? So here I have the closed surface integral over whatever closed surface I'm integrating over and I'm taking the dot product of the electric field and my unit normal vector and of course I'm multiplying that with an infinitesimally small region. Okay, that should be old news by now. So that's the do now right there. So, where does flux come in into this picture? Where, why do we even care about flux? Well, if you studied multivariable calculus, and if you've ever seen a line integral, then you're going to notice that this right here, this whole left hand side right here, is simply, it's simply what? It's simply the mathematical formulation of flux. That's it. Right? So that right there is flux. Now, during our lesson today, I want to build up this concept of flux. And what, what it really means, math, both mathematically and conceptually. So that's going to be our lesson. So let's begin in the simplest possible scenario, okay? I have some kind of planar region, right? So uh, what do I mean by a planar or something like a, let me grab a sheet of paper right here. So something like a sheet of paper, right? That, that would be classified as a planar region. So let me take my planar region right here and draw it, right here, here it is. There goes my planar region, okay? And you know, if I want to be fancy, I can denote it with a surface letter S, but you know, there, let's not make it too complicated, okay? There it is, my surface, it's a planar region, that's it, okay? Um, now, of course, this surface is going to be within an electric field. Otherwise, I'd have no interest in it, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to put the surface in an electric field by drawing some fields, field vectors. So, um, yeah, let's just draw out some field vectors, okay? I'm just drawing the field lines penetrating the surface, but of course, the field lines also exist outside of the surface. Now. If you look carefully at this electric field, two things stand out. First and foremost is that it is a uniform electric field, right? It is a uniform electric field. What do I mean by uniform electric field? I was really confused by this when I was first starting out because it's a, it's a single word, but it carries so much meaning. What do I mean by uniform electric field? Uniform electric field means that the magnitude and direction of every single vector within my electric field remains constant. Okay, let me say that again just because of how crucial it is. A uniform electric field is an electric field in which every single electric field's vector has the same magnitude and direction. So that's number one, that's thing number one. But I said there's two crucial things that I should notice right here. Let's, let's, uh, let me just zoom out for our audience right, right there. Okay? For our live audience who is watching this, uh, let's give them a better, better shot. Now, in the meantime, I do encourage you to kind of grapple with this idea of what do you think that uniform electric field is. Okay, so now that our live audience has a better view of what we're doing today, Right? Oops. Yeah, it's not worth it. Anyway, 
back to my electric field right here. Back to my electric field. Now what's happening in my electric field? Well, first and foremost, you have to recognize it's in a uniform electric field, but then you also have to recognize the direction of the electric field vectors, right? Let's say I take a very small region of my planar area, and I draw my unit normal. Let's say I draw my unit, uh, unit vector, and of course I'm not gonna have the marker because that would be too convenient. And here I have, have it right here. This right here would be my unit normal. I do it at just a tiny angle for convenience, but really they lie on the same line. And this maroon, this maroon vector you see right here is my electric field vector, okay? So as you can see, my electric field vector and my unit normal lie on each other. Right, so that's another thing to notice. The direction, the direction of my electric field vector is equal. Let's erase some of this. Is equal to the direction of my unit normal. Okay, and what significance does that have? Why should I care? Well, when I have a uniform electric field, and the direction of my electric field vector is in the same direction as my unit normal, what is the dot product going to be? Think about that for a moment, right? What is your dot product going to be? So let me erase all of this mumbo jumbo so that we can focus on the dot product between the electric field and my unit normal. So let's go ahead and write it down. The dot product of my electric field and my unit normal is going to be quite simply the magnitude of my electric field times the magnitude of my unit normal times cosine of the angle between them. Now let's observe what's happening here, right? Of course I don't know the magnitude of my electric field. I can of course write kq over r squared, but there's really no point to that. So I can just go ahead and write electric field. Okay, and what's the magnitude of my unit normal? Well, the magnitude of a unit vector is just going to be 1. So why even bother writing it? And of course, they're parallel to each other because I know they're pointing in the same direction. So I'm just going to have the electric field times cosine of 0. And what's cosine of 0? Cosine of 0, zero is just 1. So I'm going to be left with the electric field. Right? So that means the entire electric field actually penetrates the surface right here. So that's the most basic scenario. The scenario in which you have a uniform electric field in which every single vector in the electric field has the same magnitude and direction and uh, the direction of all of those electric field vectors are parallel to the direction of your unit normal vector. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's complicate things a little bit. Now let's complicate it by making the angle, the theta between my electric field vector and my unit normal greater than zero. So let me erase my old unit normal right here. Let's draw a new unit normal. Right? So hopefully you can visualize what I'm drawing right here. Uh, I had my original electric field vector, this one, and then my unit normal is going to be at some angle to this, right? So you can imagine that as being my unit normal. Let's, let's zoom in into that because that's worthy of our consideration. So let's, let's draw my electric field vector, E hat, and let's draw my unit normal vector, N hat. And of course, they are separated by some angle theta. Now, now what's the flux going to be? It's no longer going to be the electric field itself because now there's some angle between the electric field vector and the unit normal vector. So what can I do? Well, now I can just go ahead and write down that the electric flux passing through this planar surface of interest is going to be equal to what? It's going to equal two things, right? It's going to be the product of the surface area of this plane. Oh, we're live on camera. <laughs> Watch out. Okay. So, 
Um, anyway, we're gonna take the surface area of this, so I'll just write that colloquially as surface, surface area. And we're gonna go ahead and multiply the surface area of this planar region by what? What are we gonna multiply it by? We're gonna multiply it by however much uh, the electric field vectors penetrate this region. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write down E hat dot N hat. Right? That makes sense? So my electric flux is simply gonna be what? It's gonna be however much electric field lines penetrate my surface times however big my surface is. Right? So that right there is gonna be the electric flux. But there remains one caveat. There remains one caveat. What if uh, our surface itself is some kind of a variable surface? And what if our electric fields is no longer uniform. So, that's worth writing down, right? If our electric field is no longer uniform, I'm gonna have a different electric field vector at every single point, right? They're not gonna be the same magnitude and direction everywhere. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be a vector circus, if you will. So I'm gonna have maybe some short electric field lines, maybe some big ones, maybe some super small ones, some uh, medium ones, some large ones, it's gonna be crazy, right? So if I have a non-uniform vector field, a non-uniform electric field, how do I compensate for that? How do I, uh, how do I change, how do I change my, my expression right here, my equation? Oh, well, that's where the surface integral comes in, right? So instead of just multiplying my surface area by the dot product of the electric field with the unit normal. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is erase all of this and just go ahead and take the surface integral, the closed surface integral, okay? And remember, I'm taking my surface area, which of course I'll denote as dA. A lot of people write the A lowercase, I'm just gonna make it capital. Okay, so dA. And then that, my surface area, of course, is going to be multiplied by what? It's going to be multiplied by a dot product. And what dot product? The dot product of my electric field vector with my unit normal. With my unit normal. So I'm going to have E hat dot N hat. And that right there, folks, is the general equation for flux. Okay? Um, okay. So that right there hopefully was an in-depth review, or not review really, an uh, in-depth look at Flux. Okay. Flux. I didn't even write the title of the lecture, but yeah, hopefully you're going to see it when you click on the video. But uh, anyway, that's it for lecture number 10. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.